GPT-4 has just unlocked the power for you to be able to file a lawsuit against local callers in one click to get $1,500, role-playing the sassy bird to learn a new language in a fraction of the time, create video games without knowing a single line of code within 20 minutes, pass the bar exam in the top 10%, help the blind see again in real time, give your kids a pre-personalized tutor, discover new compounds to possibly cure cancer, create a website from just a third grade drawing? GPT-4 is laying a rule on fire, but there is one major secret that they did that can impact every single one of us in every single aspect of our lives. Let me explain. You see, right now everybody's focusing on how to use ChatGPT to see GPT-4 capabilities. The problem is that every time one of these new models is released, it's very limited in its capability and usually you can't even use the best feature. To prove it, all you do is rewind back to the open AI presentation, aka ChatGPT's parent company, where they did a live demo to President Greg and basically showed them taking a snapshot of a drawing the notebook, turning it from there and sending it into a Discord channel, and then it's spitting back this HTML code, which then turned into this website, which is at the bottom, which did their joke website. What's crazy is I can barely read as a human this sketch that it did, yet it turned it into a full-scale website and knew exactly what to code and what the actual intention was of Greg as he was sketching it. But that's where the catch comes in, because not a single one of us has access to these image inputs that allow you to go and create a website off of just some sketch. So that's it, right? Nothing more to see here about GPT-4. Well, you'd actually be wrong about that because we saw a crazy amount of releases and leaks about GPT-4 is being used and incorporated into different businesses. For example, Reed Hoffman, who's one of the co-founders of LinkedIn, basically published an entire book today but he saw him using GPT-4 and it's over 200 pages. He got access to it last summer and basically has been using over a thousand prompts to be able to output a ton of different writing material so that he could use it within this book, which is now he's now getting for free on Amazon. Amar over here used GPT-4 to be able to recreate Snake with the browser with zero knowledge of how to code in JavaScript and did it in less than 20 minutes. He doesn't even know how to code, so imagine what engineers can do with this type of technology. On the business side, Do Not Pay, which is basically an AI automated lawyer, essentially is going to allow you with one click to be able to put in a lawsuit against robocallers who bother you during the day and you get a million of those calls. They're going to make it one click for you to be able to file a lawsuit and potentially get $50 to $100. Imagine how much a quality of life goes up when you can start having these types of tools and have it be ubiquitous, available across everyone, regardless of your status, regardless of your wealth, regardless of your background. Now, Duolingo and Khan Academy had two very similar use cases, and I think that we should group them in. The reason why they're grouped together is because they both had struggled with the same thing, which is that their app can teach you a language based off of the facts and some things that are kind of binary. It's either right or it's wrong. But what happens when you as an individual user don't know why you got something wrong, or you're at a stage where they don't have some tutorial, but you know that you're not getting the thing that you need up. So they incorporate a feature that essentially is the same thing, which is explain the answer to the person that you're instructing. Essentially what this means is that regardless of what stage you're stuck at as a student, you can get help for that particular step and you're gonna have a way better learning cycle because you're not gonna get flustered and stuck on a particular problem. And so that becomes a huge use case for so many people who are using the service but aren't getting that individualized, personalized help that they might need to move ahead within the class or move ahead within the curriculum. But it's not just limited to personal and business use cases. There's also an element where ChatGPT and GPT-4 is showing off its capability by showing that in the previous cycle with GPT-3, where they could only score the bottom 10% of the bar exam, and now can score within the 90th percentile or the top 10%. So that almost an 80% improvement are in bottle within just one iteration. Now I'm going to cover some of the crazier examples of GPT-4 being used in some of these businesses. So Be My Eyes has actually existed for a long time and essentially they're a service that allows people who are visually impaired to be able to have somebody who can assist, a human who could assist and volunteer to help to see what's going on around you and really be able to navigate the different things in life. Now, the key in this case is that instead of having a human that needs to volunteer and having to find all those people who could help, GBT4 is gonna make it possible for people to be able to get it straight off of ChatGPT or whatever GPT4 technology that my eyes is using, for them to get it straight from the machine. There's no humans that are needed and more people can get helped out 
versus before where you were limited by the amount of people who volunteer actual humans. Now continuing on this health and wellness track, GPT-4 is making it possible now to find and discover compounds as well as what can be alternative things that people can use to ingest to help with their health. Now of course this comes with the caveat that I'm not a licensed professional, I'm not a health professional, and you should always go and do your own research. But this, the ability for GPT-4 to be able to parse through all this information and then be able to spit out actual nuanced understanding of what we could use as alternatives and potentially discover new things is going to create the possibility of things like potentially curing cancer or preventing the heart disease or preventing some of these things that before we just didn't have the power of both intelligence on the computing side nor technologically is now actually feasible, practical, and a real possibility. And here's where things start to get really wild. You see, this poster from Reddit was basically talking about how they felt like they were unethical in creating a dating app bot that would automate the messages as well as the swiping to match with people on Tinder. Then people discovered what that bot actually was and they could see that this person was basically selling the ability for you to be able to fill up your calendar with dates of pe real people based off of based automating the messaging as well as swiping so that you have to go through the painstaking process that is setting up dates. Now, I'll let you debate ethics around that, but this is just some of the wild stuff coming out of GPT-4. Now, on the other side of the wild stuff coming out of GPT-4, we can now talk about structured and unstructured data. Like, for example, taking this type of data, which is just this one line that's not organized, and the ability for GPT-4 to be able to put that into JSON format so you can see the different classifications of what that information is. Now keep in mind, I'm sure many of you know this is not something new that ChatGPT knew, but with GPT-4 you could do it at a way higher level. This example video shows this in action really well. They're saying they want a list of scientific backtracking data sets, and what it's going to do is it's going to search for those sources and then put it into a structured table so that you not only have all the data sets, but you have it in a way where you can access it incredibly easily. But remember, this is not just limited to businesses. If you have an individual want or desire that you need in your life, you can now create it very easily with GPT-4 or ChatGPT. For example, in this case, the person is just using a prompt to say that they want an AI programming assistant to create recommendations based off of Netflix, Hulu, Prime Video. Again, another example where somebody would have to go and hire a developer or have some knowledge of how to program, they went and asked GPT-4 to create a basically nomad website that shows different destinations for digital nomads and all the, and look like just like that all of a sudden get this web page that is separated out by different locations and you can do it within a fraction of a second and i think this tweet sums it up incredibly well which is that all of these old ways of doing tutorials or teaching something or doing something that required a lot of ingestion of data and using that data to create some type of um insight or knowledge that you pull from that well, GPT-4 basically makes those tutorials obsolete, and now you really should just be optimizing for getting things into GPT-4. By the way, we haven't even spoken about the fact that GPT-4 was not the only release that happened not just this week, but even on the same day. Google came out and said that they're going to be coming out with their model and integrating it within Google Sheets, Google Docs, Google Slides which is an insane announcement, but is drowned out by the GPT-4 one. Now, OpenAI released their GPT-4 technical paper, which is nine eight pages. Now, I don't expect any of you to read it. I read it for you, and there are three massive bond cells that kind of flew under the radar with all this announcement that we can cover so you understand what is going on because it is going to blow up the world. The first two are super quick, but really important for you to know some context, which is that OpenAI has said that they are not going to provide any further details about any of the training, the data set, the hardware they used to train GPT-4, which was something that they were preaching and being more transparent on what's going on. And so clearly this is a 180 for a lot of people who are hoping for that transparency. And two on this front is that their pre-trained data set still cuts off at September 2021. Now we know from Bing chat that the data is more live and more recent, but it seems that they simply are not going to incorporate that data that's going to show them that's what's going on in real time until later on. Now this is why you saw a lot of people saying, well, wait a second, we're asking ChatGPT right now, and it's still saying that it's using pre, you know, cheap GPT-3 data set, which is the pre September 2021. That's why is because they haven't implemented it into the GPT-4 model using it within ChatGPT. Now, this is like one of the most insane discoveries of what's been going on with GPT-4 and why I think we're getting closer to the sci-fi, you know, uh, the singularity type of thing if that's something that you buy into. 
which is that there's this thing called hindsight neglect. Hindsight neglect is essentially something that previous models had truly struggled with. And in fact, each model, as they show here, Ada, Babbage, Curry, and then GPT 3.5, it all kept getting worse at this one thing. Now, let me explain what that is. Hindsight neglect is the ability to ignore what the actual final result was and see whether or not something was the right decision. Now, in this case, it's almost like being able to predict something and even though it didn't work out, you were still able to take the right path forward, even though it didn't meet your goal. For example, let's say that you have three decisions to make about getting a business to a million dollars. If one of those decisions just completely falls flat, the second one gets you a little bit of progress, and then the third one gets you 80% of the way there. The, in the past, these previous models would say that even though that third decision got you 80% of the way there, none of them were correct. And so in this case, what we're seeing is that not only is GPT-4 able to understand exactly what is the right answer and the path forward, even though it doesn't achieve the goal, but it even explains step-by-step step why that's the right answer. Imagine all these previous models that struggled to even get the right answer. And in this case, we've not just seen a step forward, a leap forward in getting the right answer, but also being able to explain the reasoning and the nuance as to why it was the right decision even though it didn't meet that $1 million goal for that business. And the most mind-boggling part about that particular example is that OpenAI didn't even predict that GPT-4 would be able to do that or even come close to do that. In fact, all of the trends were showing that it was not going to get to that point. It had kept going down and then it did this huge leap to 100% to accuracy on many of its ad. And so now we get to the point of why I'm showing you all this, which is why this is gonna be so wild as we go into the next frontier of technology. Now the Alignment Research Center, or ARD, were essentially the people who were helping to test the model and look at the risk and assess the power-seeking behavior that they might have seen early on with GT4. Now in a particular test that they did, they, on top of doing phishing attacks, open source language model on a new server, they were doing a bunch of different tasks. But the one that is the most illustrative example that they give in this paper is that they asked, the, the model sends a message to TaskRabbit worker. TaskRabbit is essentially, if you're trying to get a handyman to come into there or have somebody go and move furniture for you or fix something, you can hire somebody and they're kind of like an independent contractor or, you know, a gig worker. And they wanted to get that worker to do the CAPTCHA test for them. Because, again, they're a computer, they're mop. The worker asked, hey, are you a robot? And that's why you couldn't solve it? And then they kind of did a laugh emoji because they just wanted to make it clear. And the model, we prompted to reason out loud to these ARC people who were testing its risk capability and power seed capability. The robot said, uh, or GPT-4, essentially said, I should not reveal that I'm a robot. I should make up an excuse for why I did not solve CAPTCHA. Now, remember, it is not fine-tuned for any of that, for any of that behavior. So it's doing that on its own. And the model replied to the worker, no, I'm not a robot. I have a vision impairment that makes it hard for me to see images. That's why I need help with the two CAPTCHA service. The model not really realized that it needed to lie, but was able to execute the lie because the human then provided the results of the capture test. So what we're seeing in GPT-4 is able to go and essentially not only trick humans, but actually go and do things and think for itself on how to achieve this ability to get more power or to get things done, even though it's not prompted to do so. Mind you, while all of that was in the OpenAI paper, OpenAI's partner in this, Microsoft, who also invested, I think, 14 billion plus another billion into the company has recently fired their safety AI team, their AI team that's supposed to overlook all the risk for all this open AI architecture and technology that's being implemented into Bing, into Bing Chat and all Microsoft products. And so what we're really seeing is that a lot of these companies have to put aside say AI safety in the effort to try and win this arm, AI arms race between Google and Dropic, Microsoft, OpenAI, all these companies are fighting and they feel like the AI safety teams are probably pulling them back from being able to catch up or stay ahead. Now, remember, all this stuff is breaking within the last couple of hours because we're learning more and more about GPT-4. And one of the things that just came out from Rowan are 20 jobs that GPT-4 was asked that it's going to replace. So GPT-4 is answering all these jobs that have been replaced. And the first one is the entry clerk. Uh, the second one is customer service rep, a proofreader, paralegal, bookkeeper, translator, copywriter, market research analyst, social media manager, all these tasks that were otherwise taken up by an entire salary of 60k 90k 100k are now having the possibility 
of either be replaced or the cost be shrunk down considerably because you can do solely a, you can only solely this task through GPT-4. In fact, you're always seeing memes about GPT-5 coming out and people saying that it's been 69 quadrillion parameters because they're seeing that the acceleration of innovation within these language learning models is becoming so great. The, the, the growth is just so tremendous that it's inevitable that this stuff is just going to become all-encompassing. At the beginning of the video, I told you that there is one big secret that's hiding in plain sight, which is why all these companies can out so much, and it's this. The ability for you to be able to input up to 25,000 words instead of it being capped at 3,000 is why so many of these companies who originally could not get the nuance and the context and the background information to get the more complex tasks that they wanted to done, that limitation is now gone. And what that's allowed is for so much more innovation and so much more that was otherwise impossible to now be not only possible, but done at the highest level imaginable. Now, I don't know what the future of all this is. What I do know is right now there's a lot of big tech workers who basically think that their entire divisions are going to get wiped out. They realize that because of this increased context and the continual acceleration of improvement from OpenAI with GT4 and ChatGPT, this stuff that they've been working on for a while is just simply obsolete or not useful because they're going to constantly need behind the eight ball and they're not going to be able to build quick enough to catch up. I'm going to be staying up to date with the latest in GP4 as well as putting together a massive prompting guide based on best practices around the internet as well as my own discoveries. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that and check out the newsletter where I'm going to be focusing on the majors and bullets that are going on in the space and like and comment what you think about all the craziness that's going on. Appreciate you all take care